Good day, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, today, um, well, this moment uh, marks uh, the first chapter or the first part rather, of uh, your journey to understanding PHP and working with PHP. So um, the main goal here, or the main goal of this whole um, of this whole adventure, or this whole adventure or journey. Uh, is to get you comfortable with working with PHP, right? So we're going to explore a couple of projects, uh, and we're we're going to take an approach um, that involves you learning while actually using like using the language. So um, no tests, uh, not you know, not that kind of thing where you have to get the right test. And so on. Um, self-paced. And uh, you can always come back to any one of these, uh, any one of the, these videos to to refresh yourself or you know, to refresh your memory. So the first thing that we're going to do is to get Sam set up. Right? So um, leave a, I'll leave a link below in the description where you can go and download Sam. Um, so a little a little disclaimer, right? Um, I use SAMP. I used to use SAMP when I was running on Windows, um, but right now I'm running on Ubuntu, so my entire setup is totally different, right? But the concepts are just going to be the same throughout, right? So um, after you've downloaded SAMP, you want to come to your file explorer, put your downloads, and just double click the installer. It'll take you through the process and so on. Um, and, um, when it does, just click next, don't change anything, don't, you know, don't make any unnecessary changes and so on. It is installed to the, to the default location. So this is for, for Windows. Uh, if you're running on Linux, in that right now, Windows 11 is out. And it's pretty much received the same love by a whole lot of people, uh, like Vista did. So... Yeah, for those who've switched to Linux, um, there'll be there'll be a, a whole other tutorial on, on how to get things how to get things set up. So, um, back to the installation. When the screen shows up, uh, you can remove Tomcat. You know the FileZilla, FTP, and so on. Right? Um, you can also remove Perl and fake sand right but just leave everything else on uh, so that in the near future if you're still running on the same setup you don't really have to come back and start installing these things or to restart the whole thing you know uh, for example filezilla you might find yourself using filezilla at some point right um, especially if you decide to use uh if you decide to do wordpress on localhost you will need filezilla right so, uh, make your email server tomcat if you're also picking up Java and all the other and other tools that require Tomcat and so on. Perl, we don't need it for now. Well, actually, we don't need it. We only need PHP. PHP my admin, we definitely do need that to run with MySQL. Um, the webalizer, not really, we don't need that. And fix and email, we don't really need those. But just leave it on that like instead. Click next. The location, just install it at this location. Um, if you have another location, for example, partition in your drive, um, you can always install it there. But for this pur for purposes of progression, let's just install it there. So for me, in my case at this moment, I already have SAM installed already in there. I already have SAM installed there. So for me, there is no need to do that. But we just click next. This is Files, there we go, right there. So let me just say SAMP2 right now. Yeah. Not going to give me anything. Oops. 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 I don't know if you go to this one, but I know that's right. Go 
or just select a folder, whatever you've named it should be fine. Next, pick a language. There's just two languages, so English should be fine. Click next, and you can proceed with the installation. I'm going to cancel it right here. And I uh, just leave it here. Right. So, welcome to the website. So, when the installation is done, uh, you have a folder, SAMP, XAMP, whatever you want to call it. You will have this folder right here. Right. So, next thing that you want to do, come to your start menu. Uh, find your SAMP or XAMP. With Nami for SAMP, we're going to open the control panel. And control panel should show up to us about that. So if you look at the bottom right of your task manager, you should find, should see the SAMP icon right there. And if you click on that little up arrow, right, you should find, um, should see the some control panel icon also right there. You should find them just perhaps in the Should be fine. So these alerts, right, so the first alert, right, um, or the first message or the first request, right, it's requesting uh, Apache. So Apache is requesting to, um, to get access, like to move freely through the firewall, right? So, Private, like private networks such as the home network, it's allowed public networks such as those on coffee shops and so on. So you might, you can either enable it or disable it depending on where you are, right? On the, or actually on the machine that you're using. If you're using a laptop and you like, you want to keep your things secure, right? In case you may be doing some development or you maybe putting together a project on the go and you're at a coffee shop using Wi-Fi, right? You can always you know, enable it or disable it, depending on what you prefer, right? But I'll just enable it. I'll enable it right there. I'll allow access and allow access here also. All right. Now, I'm going to come here and you can either click on this, right? Or you can right click. Yeah, just right click and select the first option, show or hide. And there you have it. So Apache is running and my SQL is running, right? Now, if you don't want to always come here, right? If you don't want to have, if you don't want to run mm -hmm. uh, the control panel and, um, and you have to start this manually all the time, just come to your config and then in auto start, I've already done that, right? I've already done this. So auto start, just select Apache and my SQL and just save those, right? And then, um, you click on save you should save that and the next time you start up the next time you start samp this should auto start just like that okay. so you can always do that next click save on that and you can close that it'll be running in the background all right so google chrome uh google chrome is uh is a web browser that you most that you most definitely need to use um it's good for development for web development especially a wonderful browser um firefox also works right but chrome is mostly i'm so gonna close this so i'm gonna run firefox because it's just a clean installation we built it and so on and it's running and it's a virtual machine so i'm not really going to be using it so next thing that you want to do right uh, next thing that you want to do on your address bar right here just come and type localhost I think there's something wrong here. Let me sort this out. That's why my keyboard is out. Okay, so you need to type uh, <coughs> localhost right here and you And you should see the um, the Apache page, right? The, the Apache home page. So if you give me a second on that one, let me just get a couple things sort of up there. Uh, 
Oh, I just got a couple of things sorted out with this thing, so I can actually go to the car right now. Okay, so just have localhost, right? And you should see welcome to Sam. Okay, Sam. So with this done, you have um, you have Sam finally installed with PHP Maestro and PHP My Admin, right? So let's check PHP My Admin localhost slash PHP My Admin. This should run pretty smooth. There she goes. All right. So we do have PHP My Admin and in here uh, we have a little test database right there that's already set up for us with our tables and stuff. Um, so now that we're here, should be done. Should be done. Should be good right now. This is really, 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 really good. Fine. All right. So we're just going to close this right now. So um, text editors, right? Um, when it comes to text editors, you choose your own text editor, right? Or your code editor, or something like you call it. Um, it's all it's mostly personal preference when it comes to when it comes to those kind of things. Um, personally, I've used quite a lot of text editors. I've used Sublime Text. I've used um, Racket. I've used Notepad Plus Plus for quite a long time. And right now, my VS Code is pretty much my go-to, right? Pretty much my go-to uh, text editor because it got it got almost everything that I need. Um, the extensions are pretty easy to install and quick also to install. So I don't really have I don't have a problem with um, with using it. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to run without a text editor because I have not installed it. So just come here, run Notepad. If you're running on Windows, well. You definitely have Notepad. You definitely have Notepad. So, how then do we start working with uh, how then do we start using PHP or actually writing PHP script and using PHP? Well, I'm gonna approach it um, from uh, from using Sam, right? So, when using Sam. We'll just go to our SAM folder right here. There's this folder here, htdocs, right? htdocs, so in htdocs, um, it's where all your code will reside, right? All your project will reside, actually, right? But at the moment, this is what we have, right? And all of, and this, right, results, actually, it renders it renders to do this, right? It renders to this. So if I just come right here, create a new folder, and uh, let's call it dash junk, junk. Right. That take everything and put it in there, right? If I come here, reload. There we go. Dashboard wasn't found. However, if I go to localhost, then I have dash chunk that folder right there. Right. So let's start a new project. So I'm just mostly going to finish that. Send it to the PM. I don't need it. It is not finished by me. All right. So next, let's create a new folder. Right. So I'm just going to create a new folder right here. I'm gonna say to it one. If I come to the browser and reload, I have to it one right there. Right now, in this section, before I start making any files, before I start writing any code or doing anything, right? I'd like you guys, I'd like you ladies and gentlemen, to understand one little thing, right? In order to actually start doing anything from here, right, there's three things that you're going to need to understand, right? 
first of all, you need to understand your HTML5 or HTML, basic HTML. Uh, CSS, you will need to, to understand that and a bit of JavaScript for the future. Like right now, we're not going to be using it, but we will definitely mm-hmm. need to use it in the future. Right. Um, next, just be ready to start learning PHP and start using PHP. All right. Cool. So, first thing we're going to do right here is make a file. Right. So, we're going to come to our notepad, push that to the side. And seeing that is an untitled file, seeing that is an untitled file at the moment, right? I'll just click, I'll just say Control S and save. Navigate ht docs, spam ht docs, tut one, tut one, and then I'll save this as index.html, right? Or just to get on with it. Index.php like that. So when I click tut one, right? When I click tut one, it's going to show a blank screen, right? Why is that? Well, when um when uh, Apache loads, right? Or when Apache or when the server um when the server heads into a directory, right? It looks for an index page, right? So if that index page is uh, index.js, um, index.js or index.html, index.php, right? Um, if that file exists, it will load that one first, right? We'll just load that file first. So index.php, right? Um, let's start then with the PHP. Start then writing PHP. So PHP. Looks like that. So these are uh, your PHP tags, right? So your code goes in there, right? All your code will go in there. So this closing tag, right, or that end tag, right? Um, it's necessary if you're going to have a whole lot of HTML here, right? Let's just say HTML. Yeah. Save that control. And let me make a variable here, right? So variables are denoted by this sign, this little dollar sign. So I'm just going to say var1, var1 is 1, semicolon, var1 is intended, right? You don't, you don't see any of this, right? You don't see anything that's in, in there, unless the echo one. Save that one. Let's put a break line right there. And there we go. There's one. Change this to two. Change this to two. Right. So let's forget about this part right now. Right now, let's write a uh, a basic uh, a basic program. Right. Uh, let's uh, print hello world. That come over here. There's hello world. Right. So there's different ways of uh, of um, printing. They're not in PHP, right? So they print for um, just for printing, and then you have echo, which does pretty much the same thing. Does pretty much the same thing. And then there's print R, right? So print R, right? Print R. Suppose we have um, you have a list, right? That you want to print. I could be in an array, right? But instead of saying array, we just do that. 
suppose you have that list, right? If you try to print this list, right? If you try to print this variable, it will throw you an error if you use the conventional print or echo. But if you use print R, it will actually print you that, that um, the list, right? It will give you the list. So if you print any other type or any other data type that isn't a string, right? if you try to print any other data type that isn't a string using print or echo, it will throw you an error. But if you use print R, it will print you, it will give you that um, that data type, right? So to show you, right, uh, print R can also print just strings, right? Reload that. Hello world. Let's do this. Another thing you can also put HTML. You can also print out HTML, but then it has to be in quotes, right? Put the single quote or double quotes, depending on how you want to do it. But double quotes, they work best and they're easier to to recognize. So we are without break line, break line. So this will be on its own line, this will be on its own line. And that will also be on its own line. Okay. Cool. So hello word from print R, hello word from echo, and hello word from print. So let's try to print this array then, or this variable which holds a list using print. throws an error, right? Warning, array to string convey, conversion, right? On this line, line number five, right? Then it says, it just prints out the type, which is array, okay? So that didn't work with print. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, let's say, hello world right there. Mm -hmm. And let's come to echo. Let's try to print that very same thing again. Give you the same error again, but then now it's after the first hello world has been printed. So it's array to string conversion, right? On line seven, right? In this file. So one of the best things, or one of the nice things about working with uh, with PHP on local host, especially, right? Um, working with it locally is that you can you can allow it right there's actually a settings to change in one online you can allow it to print you like errors right that actually makes sense for example right um if you've ever used if you've ever used uh for those who actually worked with php and are refreshing if you've ever used uh php on a uh, a hosting service right uh debugging is actually uh disabled i think it's debugging i think sure right um where it actually shows you the errors it's disabled right however here especially with SAMP, it's enabled right so if it wasn't enabled it will actually show you something else different or it might even show it might show you nothing at all so uh that's something to keep in mind as an upside so line seven and on that one that's where we are that's where the error is so this didn't work from echo okay wonderful let's put it here then print r oh yeah and you can also check out the official documentation of php um just go to their site i'll leave um i'll leave the, um, the link at um on the description below Okay, so if I do that, print, and there you go. I didn't get an error, but I got my list. One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? That's where we have it, so we should be done. So, basic, start here. Printing thing, right? So now, let's go to, let's go to loops. Right. Well, let's start with variables first of all. Right. I know I did introduce the concept of variables and stuff, but um, I think I should uh, I should really should really hammer into it. 
a little bit right now. Okay, so variables denoted by that, right? By this little sign right here. So if you say, okay, um, file one, or let's just say name, and right. Okay. So these are two different variables, right? Name, surname, right? Other thing with variables, right? Especially with PHP, right? Um, the kind of case, uh, it's case sensitive, right? Meaning that name, right? Meaning that this name at the top, right? It's different from name, right? Right. And if I had name it will be totally different too right so how about i just use this name? just keep it like that so, so if i say echo um name is name that right so i will uh, i'll tell you a bit about uh, about this this little dot right there so if you want to concatenate um a string right with a variable you use the dot right use the dot um in uh in javascript javascript you have uh, that and then you do str right i think it's str string as well, but totally different case from here right to just use that period the dot so name right I come here name is one right if i say name with um uppercase n name is that. if i say name name is tom right so case sensitive all of these mean different things they hold different things right much as when you and I read it, it's name, 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 right? And if um, you're reading it in context, right, and say, okay, but this person's name is, or that person's name is, right? Name is pretty much name. But here, name can hold different things, right? For example, let me put a number here, right? Um, let's say 10, 10. And let me put, um, let me put a, another number here. My favorite number is pi, right? So if I print name right from here, it would give me that number. If I print name and it would give me ten ten. If I say name, it would give me one, just like that. So that right there is variable, right? Not really going to dig in, dig deep into all the other things, but I'm just looking to just to refresh, right? Just to, to refresh on, on just a couple of things, right? Variable. So next, um, I'm not going to go into data types, because uh, if you if you work with if uh, if you understand JavaScript, I think that one requirements for you to proceed with this is a pure JavaScript, right? Um, I'm not really going to go deep into that. Uh, the same concept applies here, right? Same concept applies here. However, um, let me let me just touch on arrays a little bit. Let me just touch on arrays. Let me say AR1, right? So you could say array and do this, right? So your key will be here. And your value will be here. So this right here gives you a dictionary kind of an array, right? Gives you a dictionary kind of an array. Um, and then here, the AR2. This also gives you kind of the same thing. Um, or, or let me say key value. And then 
a of three let's go make it this right just random this right now let's test this out okay so this won't fly here uh sorry for that one just been running through quite a lot of languages so i tend to tend to kind of bring concepts of another language into another language and then when i get an error i just yeah really messes with me so back to print r right uh ar1 the first array then you get key and value right so with this method right with this method you you're creating an array um with uh like using key value pairs right like key value key value key value right for example right let's um let's use this in um in a practical manner right let's use this in a practical manner let's call this rotation right so uh let's see um the house right and then we can also have an array in an array right so array so let's say um uh, read read is uh yeah let's say cap and then House number, we call the soft wrap House number, house number, let's say, uh, 25. Um, color of the house, right? Color of the house, let's make it blue, right? So, print our rotation and like that. So, house, so this house, right, is on Cap Street, it's house number uh, 2105, and the color is blue. Right. If you work with arrays, um, you definitely get that one. So then okay, let's um let's 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 take this array right and let's let's make it make a bit more sense right let's make it make a bit more sense let's just add some html to this god i'm getting slow with this that okay let's have a style right here um let me just say now what i'm going to do next is uh let me have a uh view and let me just call this a house card and i'll have a uh, list item i have another list then first right first let me have the house number and let me have the color 
or just try to the color that you have the um, green color. So if you say color or color. So now, so we'll say uh, AR1. Yeah, house right so from house right from this array house i want the, um, the house number i we'll take that house house number so from here that reload and define the r1 array name Oh, it's rotation. We gotta put that. Rotation. Cool. We did something right here. House. Oh, yeah, I should echo that, right? Cool. So there's the house number. We'll just copy this text again. Then we'll just change this. Street. And then oh. So house number is this, we want to have street and is blue, right? So if we were to change anything up here. Right, before to change anything in our array, like uh, let's say uh, it's on Unity Street, house number 10, and it's green. Come here and reload, house number 10, Unity Street, and this one. So we'll do away with that. Or, Let's add another thing, right? Add another thing to this. Right? Oh no. So this is the owner. Come right here. Take that uh, house number right there. Owner and just say owner. So basics, basics, basics. Like right? just starting out. We're just starting out. So for now, I think just playing around with this would be enough. Right? Just uh, going back to where we started actually writing the code, and then coming back to to this point. That should um that should be fine. That should be fine for for you should be fine for you so another thing that you can um that you can do right that you most definitely can do with um with this is um just building systems right you can build entire systems on um on php right facebook initially was built in php i'm pretty sure um everybody everybody knows that and there's a whole lot of other um, other systems and other things that run our world today that still run in php so as much as you can go online and you know meet all this hate or come across the hate on PHP, um, it's not not really a bad but that language. Um, one of the reasons why um, PHP is hated quite a lot, right? Um, is because it's easy, very easy. Like I mean, super easy, right? To to make crap, as they say. Um, it's quite, quite easy to do that. So 
it, 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 it's very easy to to make junk right like you can build an entire system right you can prototype an entire system in php or even build it right and it will work but maintaining it would be a nightmare you see that's that's the thing that um that's the problem that's that's why php is kind of hated so um if you if it's an amateur that's just getting started with php and happen to build something and it's nice it's cool going back to the code to maintain it you know even to read it most of the times it's pretty it's pretty difficult pretty difficult because everything will be everywhere and it would just be it would just be like that i've uh, come across quite a a great share of, 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 of that but um it, it's part of the learning process it's part of the learning process so the best way to actually you know um use php or the best way to actually work with php is to build things right not by building a couple of things with a b c you know make a little website um that does something whatever you think right and you know just start from there and and work your way up work your way to, to bigger things right? and try to revisit code that you will have written that also makes also makes your life a lot easier when you are starting out with PHP. so this is probably the longest setup video for such a uh, a simple language but uh, i hope you you got something out of it and uh, i hope you learned something out of this so I'll be I'll be signing off for now. So uh, thank you and have a good day. We'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.